And hey, I'm back with my top 15 quarterback rating or rankings. This is, will be 6 through 10. Um, number 6 is Drew Brees. I originally had him on my top four, top 5, but I um I had to rethink it because as good as Drew Brees is, last year he did well, but his team sucked. Okay? He still had a decent year. He had over 4,000 passing yards and that's a down year. Um he lost his one of his best targets in Jimmy Graham. He, uh, you know, he's just he's got another age, another year on him. His defense is horrible, so he'll at least get the opportunity to throw the ball a lot. Um, he has Mark Ingram, so they could establish running games. For some reason, that team does not know how to balance itself. So he will throw a lot. He'll get a lot of touchdowns. He'll get a handful of interceptions. I think last year was his worst year interception wise, and now. I'm pretty certain he uh, he lost Kenny Stills and Jimmy Graham. Who's he going to throw to? Marcus Colson's getting up there in age. I mean, you got what, Brandon Cooks. I mean, come on. you got to add players to help him a little bit. And they haven't really done that. So I don't think it's so much that he is going to have a bad year as much as the Saints are going to have a down year. So with that with that being said, Ben Roethlisberger has uh, probably the one the best, if not one of the best, Offenses in the league, so I had to switch him and Brees. I'm not going. I'm going based off of how I think they're going to do, and it factors in their their pass a little bit. So that's number six. Number seven is Tony Romo. A lot of people give Tony Romo a lot of crap. They think he's a choke artist, this and that. Listen, if he was a free agent, there are about a dozen teams that would line up and pay him big money to be their quarterback. I don't think he's a bad quarterback. He's always high in, in touchdowns. To, to interception ratio, it's, it's very, it's a very good ratio. He throws for like 4,000 yards every year at least. Um, he he just plays well, I and mean, I think he gets a lot of blame for things that aren't his fault. For example, two years ago when they played Peyton Manning in Denver, and they were tied 48-48, he throws an interception with about three minutes left to go in the game. Well, it's 48-48. If your defense steps up and stops someone, Tony Romo does his job and he looks like a hero. Same thing a couple years ago uh, whenever um, Brett Favre played for the Vikings. Adrian Peterson fumbled the ball five times in that game. But Brett Favre threw an interception in overtime, so everything's his fault. But the defense couldn't stop him in regulation. The defense couldn't stop him after he threw the interception. Adrian Peterson got no blame for, for five turnovers. Well, five fumbles. I think he only... I think they recovered two or three of them. But still, he had three turnovers. And, and prior to that, Brett Favre, I'm pretty sure, had three touchdown passes. And no interceptions prior to, prior to the interception overtime. So what do you blame? You blame the fact that you got to the point you're at because other people screwed up? Or you blame the guy that screws up in that moment? In my opinion, um, if you do everything better prior to that moment, you don't have the end result moment. The big interception in the game. Okay, if they stop, if they stop the Denver Broncos from getting a touchdown, they make them punt twice or I'm holding the field goals twice. He doesn't throw the ball in that situation. They're running the ball to run out the clock. Okay, so plain and simple. He throw, he's, he's a very good passer. Um, he's got a cannon for an arm. Um, I would say he's one of the big. Uh, Stories, I'd say, in the NFL, because he was undrafted. No one drafted him, and he became—he's become a pretty good quarterback. I wouldn't mind him on my team. That's all I gotta say. He's a pretty good quarterback. Number eight is Russell Wilson. Now I'm, I'm, I'm factoring in the fact that Russell Wilson is consistent. Okay, he has two Super Bowl appearances already. He doesn't turn the ball over. He takes care of the ball really well. He is a huge factor in the in the best running attack in the NFL with him and um, Beast Mode, Marshawn Lynch. You got to factor in he gets a little better this year. They let him throw a little more this year, so his yards are going to go up. His touchdown pass is going to go up. You also got to factor in one big key thing. He has Jimmy Graham on this team. Jimmy Graham just got added to that team, and they are going to. I'm. I'm confident he's going to have at least another 800 to 1,000 yards pass. They're going to let him throw so much more, and he has the best defense in the league backing him up. Or one of the best, I should say. 
So I and I think Russell Wilson, he takes care of the ball. He runs good. He's smart. Um, he is short, but he finds a way around that. He finds the windows to throw the football. Um, prior to Jimmy Graham, he doesn't really, ha- he didn't really have any weapons, and he still was able to throw consistently and accurate, and so on and so forth. So that's why Russell Wilson is at number eight on my list. Number nine, he's on this list a little bit by default. And here's why: number nine, number nine is Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan is number nine because. He's not a bad quarterback. For the last few years, he's been on a horrible team. And what I mean by that is the offensive line has been god-awful. Have been able to protect them. They've had no semblance of it, resemblance of any kind of defense. Um, he does have weapons. He has, like, Devin Hester, Julio Jones, uh, who's the other Roddy White. So he has weapons, but he, did, he wasn't protected at all last year. Now, new coach, new system. I think that's going to improve. So he can't get any worse than it was last year. I mean, he wasn't bad last year. So he's going to, he's just going to get better because the team is going to get a little bit better. So that's why I have him number nine. Number ten is Philip Rivers. Philip Rivers, in my opinion, I would love him to be a quarterback on any team I coach because he plays hard. He wants to win. He has that desire to win. He can make just about any throw. He can make the awkward throws. My issue with with him, and it's nothing that's really his fault, is the team he's on. I don't think the San Diego Chargers run their team very well. And what I mean by that is he doesn't have, like, a lot of receivers, a lot of big-name receivers. Like Malcolm Floyd or Michael, one of those two, one of the Floyds, um, on the team, Antonio Gates. Um, but Antonio Gates is out, I think, three or four games because of a PED use. So, um, I know there's another receiver on that team. I just can't think of his name right now. It's not Kendall Wright. I can't think of his name. It's not, not important. For some reason, I just see that team as mismanaged. They have talent every year, and they come out, and they, for some reason, they just lay an egg. I don't think it's because of him, though. He plays pretty well. For the first eight games of the season last year, he was up there in, 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 um, in, um, MVP rankings. He was right up there with, Tom Brady and Peyton Manning and Aaron Rodgers. So um, I think he'll do a little better this year. They have um, Brandon Oliver. Um, he'll be running. I think Ryan Matthews will be healthy. So they'll have a more consistent running game. Uh, I just don't have faith in their defense. Their defense was supposed to be pretty good last year, and they just didn't show up as much as they needed to. So that's that. Um he is personally one of my favorite quarterbacks to watch, but I don't see him being, I see him being better than he was last year, but he's not going to be, t- he's top 10. I mean, that's the best I can do for him. I can't honestly put him above any of the other nine. So that's my video for 6 to 10. I'm going to go ahead and do my video for 11 through 15. All right. Thank you.